Hello everyone. Now in this session, we will be solving some miscellaneous equations. We have already done lot of other equations containing exponential functions, logarithmic functions, quadratic equations and also we have enough information about functions. So with all this information, whatever you have gathered by now, we will try to solve some problems. Now, my first illustration is that we have been given two equations, 3 raised to x minus 2 raised to y equal to 1 and log x to the base 2 plus log y to the base 3 equal to 2. And the product of all values of x and y that satisfy the equations is, and we have been given four options. Now, we have to pick up the correct one. Now, there are certain questions which can be solved actually by observation also. You don't have to pick up even pen. If you have clarity here, everything is perfect. Now, my first observation is that first and second equations, that 3 raised to x minus 2 raised to y equal to 1 and log x to the base 2 plus log y to the base 3 equal to 2, these two get satisfied by x equal to 2 and y equal to 3 because 3 raised to 2 would be 9 and 2 raised to 3 would be 8 and 9 minus 8 is 1. I mean, even if you can attack even this much, this is the first step which should strike you. That x equal to 2, y equal to 3 satisfy. But the thing is, some of you may think that how do you say that x equal to 2 and y equal to 3 is the only solution? I am not yet saying that this is the only solution. But one of the options or one of the solutions at least, I know that x equal to 2, y equal to 3 satisfy. Now, whenever you are doing by observation, something like this, what I said just now, your, it, your prime duty is that you check what all other possibilities are there, whether they still exist or they are ruled out. Like if I say x less than 2, y less than 3. This is one case that x can be less than 2, y can be less than 3. Then we find that LHS of, that means left hand side of second equation is less than 2. Means obviously x less than 2, y less than 3 will not work. x greater than 2, y greater than 3, I again check. I find there that left hand side of second equation is greater than 2. So even this combination will not work. You may think that are we going to substitute values like this. I am not saying substitute values. I am saying any x which is greater than 2 or any y which is greater than 3. So now my third possibility is x less than 2 y greater than 3. Now, this disturbs the first equation and LHS of first equation becomes less than 1. So, even this is ruled out. Now, fourth possibility, the only possibility left is x greater than 2, y less than 3. What happens here? And even this disturbs the first equation. LHS of first equation is greater than 1. Means, these four possibilities tell that no other solution exists. So, the only solution is x equal to 2, y equal to 3. Question is regarding product of the values of x and y. And x and y, you take product, means 2 into 3. So, answer should be 6. That is option A. Now, this question I have taken, keeping in mind that it has log, it has exponential nature in it, and x and y, two variables have appeared. We have not done in our previous sessions equations having more than one variable. So, this was a good experience. So, let us move to next. Now, next one is that for all positive integers n, fn is described as log of n square to the base 2002. Capital N is given to be f11 plus f13 plus f14. Then, conditions on n are given. Correct option we have to choose. Now realize this, that whenever question in the form of numbers given, especially in competitive examinations, JE kind of examinations, I am saying, there those numbers also speak something. Now some of you may think that yes, we have seen questions in the past where some 2014 was occurring or 2018 was occurring. That is basically, that question must have been designed in that particular year. So this question may be actually might have been designed in 2002. So it has 2002 in it. Another thing is that 2002 also has some role to play. I mean, it is such a well-designed problem. Those 11, 13, 14 also must be connected somewhere to that 2002. So, let us start. Capital N is given to be F11 plus F13 plus F14. 
I actually substitute in place of small n 11, in place of small n once 13 and once 14. And then actually I simplify that. Log of n square can be written as 2 log n. So the step 2 log 11 plus 2 log 13 plus 2 log 14. And that will tell me log m plus log n plus log n, p. That would be log of m into n into p. So that leads to 2 times log of 11 into 13 into 14. And that gives me log of 2002 to the base 2002 multiplied by 2. Now see, such a wonderful question. I mean the base is 2002. Number of which you are taking log, that is also 2002. Log a to the base a is 1. And hence, the answer is just 2. I mean, such a complicated looking question and simplicity lies in the answer. n equal to 2 should be the right option. So, option is D. Let us move to the next question. And the next question is that without direct multiplication, for the value of root x, we have to find where x is 28 into 29 into 30 into 31 plus 1. See, Hint is clearly written that without multiplication means there has to be some hint hidden in the problem. And we have to get value of root x and four options are given. The correct one we have to choose. Now, when I read those 28, 29, 30, 31. Now, this tells me something. These are four consecutive numbers. So, why to name them as 28, 29? If I write this as, as n, n plus 1, n plus 2, n plus 3. This actually algebraically looks more decent to me. And I write x equal to 1 plus n into n plus 1 into n plus 2 into n plus 3. And keep in mind that n lastly is to be replaced by 28. When I see n into n plus 1 into n plus 2 into n plus 3, it's my actually, I should not say intelligence, but I should say presence of mind. That which two terms are to be clubbed together, there comes your interest in the subject. So, n into n plus 3, I club and I say n square plus 3n and n plus 1 into n plus 2 will also give in the product somewhere n square plus 3n. That is the idea of keeping n plus 1, n plus 2 together and n and n plus 3 together. Now, I further multiply that n square plus 3n to n square plus 3n plus 2 and I realize that finally that expression for x becomes 1 plus n square plus 3n whole square plus 2 times n square plus 3n. Now, does it not look like a square plus 2a plus 1 kind of? That means it should be a plus 1 whole square. So, my a is n square plus 3n. So, answer for x is n square plus 3n plus 1 whole square. Now, what would be root x? Root x would be simply n square plus 3n plus 1. What is n? n is 28. Substitute, simplify 28 square plus 3 times 28 plus 1 you will get answer for root x as 869. Realize this, nowhere we tried ever to multiply that 28, 29, 30 and 31. And that question setter also must have had this fear that no one should think of multiplying those numbers. So already he has declared without direct multiplication, you have to find root x. So same idea we used here and we have arrived at the answer as 869. And the correct answer should be option C. Now, one more question and there perhaps we may end our session. Now, next question is that the roots of the equation x minus 2, x minus 4 plus k times x minus 3, x minus 5 equal to 0 are distinct and real, real and equal. These four options are there. Imaginary, one real, one imaginary kind of. Now, realize this x minus 2 into x minus 4 is going to give you a quadratic polynomial. x minus 3, x minus 5 is also going to give you quadratic polynomial. So basically, the left hand side is a quadratic polynomial overall, in all. So it's a quadratic equation. So quadratic equation means one real, one imaginary part is ruled out. So option D is anyway not going to come. That never happens. So either both real or both imaginary, perhaps we would have entertained. But still, remaining 3 we have to still check. So, I call that x minus 2 into x minus 4 plus k times x minus 3 into x minus 5 as px. And one way of solving the question is, because question is related to the nature. So, I can check this that 
P2, P3, P4 and P5. What do they say? P2 is greater than 0. P3 is less than 0. P4 is also less than 0. And P5 is greater than 0. Now, these expressions P2 greater than 0, P3 less than 0, they also speak something. If I draw a graph of y equal to px, then P2 greater than 0 means graph at x equal to 2 is above x-axis. P3 less than 0 means it tells me graph is below x-axis. That means that curve must have crossed the x-axis between 2 and 3 once. And P3 less than 0, P4 less than 0, they are same sign. So we do not know whether the graph has cut x-axis or not. But P4 less than 0, P5 greater than 0 tells me because of sign change that graph or that curve must have crossed x-axis. So what we are seeing is that between 4 and 5, that curve has met x-axis once. Between 2 and 3 also, it has met once. It is a quadratic equation. So there is no third root. So there are only two roots. And we are finding those two roots at two distinct intervals, different intervals. 2, 3 and 4, 5. So, obviously, roots are real and distinct and correct option is A. I hope this session was very different from the previous sessions. I mean, no particular rule, no particular formula we have used. But all four questions were different and here I end my session on equations. So, when we meet next time, I will come with some new topic, rather new chapter I should say. Till then, stay tuned. Thank you.